Hi everyone, here is Ali Reza Darakshish from Arc Motion Studio and today we are going to model a metropole parasol which consists of six concrete pillars which are extended to the form as a timber structure and is located in the center of Seville in Spain. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and start modeling. Okay. To begin with, I've prepared these two planes, this seam, so I have positioned them to the right place. This is uh, actually uh, the pictures I took from internet and uh, I used one for the top view and one for the front view. And I used the uh, two planes with two materials assigned to them, which uh, are the same pictures as I uh, put it here. If you don't know how to do that, I mean the adding a picture to the background, I'll show you the process in a bit. For that, let me uh, create a new project and go to the top view, this one. And for now, uh, for, to begin, I go to the mode here and in the view setting, in the back, we have, and uh, we can put an image here. So I select my image. For example, this one, this one, because it's top view, let me open it, okay. And now you have this file as a, this image positioned uh, on the top view. But it's not in the perspective view because this is just an image. And we, uh, because of that, we just have it on the top view. We cannot import this image in the perspective view. We should go uh, another process to do that. i show you uh, in a bit. But here you have the possibility to uh, change the size and or offset in both direction, x, y direction, or rotate it as you desire and set the transparency to 100% or 0% and also you can set an alpha mode. Okay, I have not used this until now, I just, uh, I have just used this parameter sheet. And now, if I want to have the picture here as well, let me put it back to zero rotation. What I can do, I can assign a plane with just one segment. We don't need any segments. And I just need to resize it so that it matches the, uh, the image like this. Okay. Now here I can double click and make a new material and here I can deactivate the reflectance. I just need the texture in color so uh, I can just come to the texture and select the same texture here. No. And in viewport, uh, to see it better in the viewport, I set it usually on 1024. And I assign it to the plane. So we have exactly the same image that we had here on the perspective view as well. So this is uh, the process I made, I used to uh, position the file here. So let's go back to our main file. So, to begin with, I'm going to use a cylinder for the pillars. I go to the top view and position it to the right place. And set the scale and the height. For the height, I go to the front view to have better understanding how much, how, how much the height should be. I think, yes, okay, 50 should be enough. And as you see here, the cylinder is tilted to the left side. So for that matter, I'm using the shear deformer here as a child of the cylinder. And I'm going to change the, okay, before that, as you see here, it's a, big, a little big. And, and to prevent that, just click to fit a parent. So it's now fit to the cylinder. So now I can change 
the angle and the direction. I want it to be in this, uh, into the left direction. So to better see this, I'm going to come to the perspective view and check it out here. So like this. Okay, this should be enough. And uh, we need the, we don't need the curvature here. We want to just a linear tilting. So I can just zero out the uh, the curvature, and it's okay. Now I'm going to copy this and set the other ones. The same scenario here. So I'm just going to top view and position this in the right place here okay and now you see we need another direction so I can come to share and change the direction okay something like this and reposition it to the oh sorry and reposition it to the right place Not this one, but the cylinder. Okay. Go to the next one. And as I see it here, these two pillars, actually these two, uh, looks just straight. They have no tilting. So I can just delete the shear on it and I'm back to the original form. So I can I put it here, make it a, a little bigger, so maybe 20, okay. And I make a copy of it and set it to for the other one as well. The right position here. And copy here and here. But I will reduce the size for these two. Okay, and this two seems to need the shear deformer again. So, curvature zero, tilting, okay. Seems this should come to this side. Okay, and the other one, position it the right place, and again the shear deformer. Curvature to zero and okay, this looks great. And as you see here, now we have we have positioned our pillars in the right position. So there's just one thing left to do. I select all of the cylinders and I come to cap and increase the segments because we don't have any segments here. And for the modeling later, we need more segments. So I give it a three. This should be enough. Okay. So now to go further, uh, first I'm going to create a null. I rename it pillars. And I put all the pillars inside. I'm making a copy of it. And I'm hiding it out. So if in any reason something goes wrong so I have access to the or original uh, cylinders because now I'm going to make these cylinders editable not this one this should come out the plane is not in the pillars I can delete it here as well okay so let's begin and go further with our first pillar here I'm right clicking on it and uh, to make it editable I can make uh, click C on the keyboard for make it editable or current state to object or connect object and delete uh, all the three will do the same so I'm going to go with uh, connect object and delete so out of the cylinder I now have a polygon made of points lines and uh, polygon okay now uh, to go further I'm going to uh, select it all, uh, the top cap this and uh, I'm going to extrude it but before extrude make sure that this option create caps is off 
Okay. Now I'm going to front view and let me find it too. Okay. And now I'm extruded up like this. And I'm going to rescale it and reposition it. The process is a bit a pick and tweak. So uh, it may take a bit time. But at the end, you will get the result you want. So I'm uh, extruded it up again. This time I'm extruded 10 centimeters. Okay. And I'm rescale it again. So. And, okay. and I can reposition it like this. And I extrude it again. On the top and risk it again. So to have something like this. Great. And now when you see in the top, it seems it's a bit bigger. So to correct that, I'm going to line mode and select the top line and meet ring selection in the bottom and this one. And oh, okay. This one, maybe we don't need it. And I'm going to scale it on the Z direction down. So, like this. Okay. Great. And now I'm going to select the top part. Of course, the space. And I'm going to drag it to the left side. Okay. And... This one, so so when you see this in perspective, you should have a good feeling about it, how it looks at the end. Okay, this is great. And now this top, this part, as you see it here, or better say, uh, it should come down. So for better, I'm selecting the face and I'm rotate it. So I get the result. Okay. I can select this one now. And by selecting the soft selection, I can now this one as well. I'm going to increase this to 15 or 20 maybe dirty okay that's good and I'm dragging this one down so like this and now this face and this face This two to bring it out. Then and the surface. Okay. Now I can go to top view and select this one. See which point is it? This one, yes. And this one. And drag it a bit to the corners. This one as well. Mm. I'm deactivating the soft selection and just Selecting these points and move it to the edge. Like 
this. Now when you look at it, you have this, you have something like this. Okay, it's uh, the process is uh, the model is a bit rough, I know, but uh, there's no problem because at the end I'm going to uh, put it in a in a sub in subdivision surface like this. Let me bring it out here. And as you see, you get a good rounding here, so there's no problem at all. And also in this side, okay? This is exactly what we want. Okay, now we go to the second pillar, this one. Uh, I go to the same process for this one as well, so I'm going to connect up chicken and delete. I rename it to P2 and this one to P1. Okay, I'm going to do the same process here too. So, first thing I'm going to select all, right click and optimize. So, in case some points are not connected, they will be connected. So, now I'm selecting the over part and extrude it out. Before that, I'm going to front view, and so I extrude it like this. Reposition and rescale it. Right. Extrude it up again. Or a little more. And rescale it. I'm going to rescale it up again, something like this. And as you see here, we have also some tilting here as well. So I'm going to rotation and I'm going to rotate it a bit in both direction. So think like this. And I'm dragging it down. Okay. Seems this one should come down as well. So let me select it. This one should also come here, okay, and on top of this one, I drag it down. Okay, and as you see here, the scale is, is not correct, so I come to the uh, line mode, select this, and select the top one as well, and the bottom one. And I'm going to rescale it on Z direction and also in X direction. Okay, now we see that we should match the position of these to this to this right to this uh, uh to this line this is the, uh, to this hidden line. So to do that, I'm going to the top uh, to the perspective. Select these points and also enabling the soft selection, increasing the radius. Now I can just drag it to the edge.
Ja. Yes. This one, this one here as well. Okay, the other side is okay. This one should come here, and this one. So I position this also here. And I position this one, this should come here, and this one should come here, actually. Of course we need more segments here, but we'll do that later. So now, I can just drag the P2 near P1, and to connect these two, these two uh, pillars, we need to make them as one. So. I click on connect object and delete again, so we have just one for both. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these faces, but I'm going to deactivate the soft selection. These three with these three points. And let's see if it works. Uh, I'm going to use the bridge tool to connect these two. Okay, now these two pillars are connected together to each other. And what can what I can do? I can just go to the front view and uh, optimize the position of the points. A bit so like this and I can come to this one here can drag it a bit up now I can go to point most of this point and this point okay Now I need to uh, clean up the, uh, the polygons so that we have a better distribution of the points and lines and polygons and so on. Uh, to do that, I, by short click and O, I'm going to slide the points to the right place. Like this. And here we need, as here you see, we need more curvature, so I need to add more segments. I use a knife tool, like this, and I'm going to connect this one. Yes, and in the bottom, at the bottom, I need also one here. Or it can be like this as well. So we have two, three, four. We have four lines, so it's okay. It's a quad. And now I can come to line mode and select this one and extend it inside. So, like this. And points, I can select these two points, this point, upper points and slide it in one bit so 
So I can use the slide tool. And now I can just select these points because the thickness of this side is too much. Okay, and I'm going to drag it up, rotate it a bit, so now I can use the slide tool again and clean this up. here as well so now when I activate this I will have something like this okay now what we should do I'm selecting the inner points and go to the uh, selection and surface should be on because we just want to work on the surface and I can increase this a bit 45 it's too much 45 and now I can drag this a bit down. Like this. We'll do the same here. Selecting this one. Drawing this one down again. This one we need more. Radius. So 55. So it looks okay. And here we need more segments. I add one segment in the middle. Select it and I'm deactivating the surface so I work on the object, the whole object, and I can drag the set. Okay. This, the thickness here is also too much. We should reduce the thickness here as well. have something like this okay now you see that if I come to the object you see that we have this form here that we needed okay it looks clean and the subdivisions looks okay and I will go and do the whole process for other plus as well and make them make them a whole as an object at the end but the process is the same, so I will skip the modeling part, this part, because it's a bit uh, time consuming and it doesn't fit in the uh, duration of our tutorial. But you can uh, simply try this one and go further and create a hole for yourself. This is also a good practice for modeling. But the process is the same, so there is no more, uh, no more, no more additional things uh, for the modeling so I will come back to you when uh, the modeling is done and we go further to make this uh, forms out of this one so actually the timber forms here so now we are back 
I have modeled the uh, almost entire uh, structure, but I wanted uh, to show you how it looks like in this stage of the project. So let me turn this one off. Okay, so that you can see this better. So, uh, as you see, I have uh, the process was the same. Uh, this is nothing special, but this part it has. If I if I may show you the picture, it has a roof, a roof, uh, so that you can pass through the uh, timber structure here. So for that matter, how I did that, I just copied uh, this surface. Let me show you this part. I made a copy of it and I extruded and beveled it a bit so with brush tool and so on so that we have an oval, uh, what do you say, a roof part over this structure. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect these two objects together so that uh, I can work on them as one simple object, not as two. Combine these two just by right clicking and uh, connect object and delete. So now we have one simple object. Okay. The, uh, the modeling process is not done. Still there is much to do. Uh, for example, I, if I deactivate the subdivision the surface, I need to connect these parts. And we have an opening here in this side and also in this side. That we should uh, mention and take, uh, take care of. So for now, I'm going to just uh, deactivate the planes. So I have better view and access to my model. And uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm, uh, by selecting the pen tool, the polygon pen, I'm going just to connect points that uh, seems to be connected in the model, like this. Here we have the openings, I think, so that we should work on it later. And this part, this part, and so on. And after that, uh, when I've done the connecting part, I'm going to, uh, what do you say, uh, further work on this, the model and uh, try to optimize it to get a better look at the end. So for example, this part, this should also be connected. Okay. So. So for now, I'm going to skip recording and uh, we'll be back when the modeling is done and we go further from there. So now I'm back and we are done with the modeling and we will go further to make this uh, timber structures as you see here. Let me make it bigger so that you can see it. Okay, we have some two uh, rows of timbers and that are joined together as 90 degrees. So let's do that. Uh, for that, firstly, I'm going to make a copy of the subdivision surface or model and I'm going to hide one and I'm going to work on this one. And uh, to make these cuts that we need, I use uh, the Rono fracture and I put the subdivision surface beneath it. So, so we have these Rono fractures assigned to this whole model but uh, we don't want it to, we don't want uh, these uh, breaks to look like this. We want these breaks to look linear. So to do that, I come to the Voronoi fracture in source. These uh, fractures are based on this point generator distribution uh, that is uh, assigned automatically when you create a Voronoi fracture. But we don't need this, so I'm going to simply delete it 
uh, to assign a new source, a new uh, fracture. So, so uh, we need to uh, use a matrix uh, like this. And I'm going instead of grid array to linear. Here's our matrix. But I don't want it to be in y direction, I want it to be in x direction. Something like this. I bring it here. I come to the front view to position it in the right place. So you see it much better here. Okay. I'm making, uh, let's see, let's go to. 50 and now we have 50 degrees these cubes are actually no cubes they are just uh, positions in this in the uh, our three-dimensional space they are just uh, define the position of each matrix so now I can come to the fracture and assign this matrix as a source and as I do that, you see that we get something similar that we are looking for. Okay, now I can come to the object, neuronal fracture, and uh, assign an offset fragment. For example, let's go to, hmm, let's make one, okay, to look like this. And you see this is an open, each one is open, and we want, I want it to be closed. Okay, so I can optimize and close holes. And you see now they are all closed. But I don't want this thick, I want the smaller ones. So I'm just going to invert it. So, and the number of the segment, the, the space between each timber should be less than what it is right now. So I can just come to the matrix and reduce this scale. So let's go for uh, seven. Let's see how it looks. Okay, it looks okay. But now I see that we have to increase the count. So I go to 80. Let's see <clears throat> if it's enough. And we need more, so let's go 100. The good thing about this method is that it is all uh, parametric. You can change the variations and the space between each timber and the thickness of each timbers whenever you want. Okay? So because everything, every, every fracture is controlled actually by this matrix. So if I change the matrix, even if I change the angle, you'll see that this will change. Okay? Let me say, show you uh, for that just to show purpose i'm going to decrease this okay and i'm going to rotate it a bit so that you understand what i mean like this if I, for example i rotated it uh, 38 degrees this will assign to the matrix as to the fracture warner fracture as well you see the same structure but the timbers are from another direction okay so let me bring it back Come to count, and here I go to the right. And an object, I'm going to give it a hundred, the value. Okay. So now it is okay, but we need also the same process, but in ninety degree. Okay. So I name it this matrix X direction because it's assigned to the X direction. And this uh, Warner fracture, I name it, uh, what should we name it? Uh, timber, timber on X. Okay, so now I can just copy this here. I bring it above. Okay, and here now again, I'm going to source, I'm going to delete this matrix X, and I'm going to hide this one. Okay, now I'm making a copying of the X matrix again, and I name it X, Y, and Z direction. This is on Z direction, and this timber should be also on Z. 
And now for this Fourier fracture, I'm going to source and assign this matrix. But we should before that we should change the direction. So instead of x direction, I'm going to z direction. Okay, and of course we need to reduce the counts, not 500, 550. And I'm coming to the right view and position it here, something like this. Okay, I think we need less points. Okay, it's great. But the distance is 7, so that they are look all square at the end. Okay, and now I can just hide this matrix here. I don't want to see it anymore. And in, uh, in timber Z, on Z, on this Werner fracture, I'm going to assign this one. Okay. You see that we have assigned it in the other direction. And now I can also hide this out, this matrix here in this viewport, and I can activate the, which one is it? This one. So the combination of these two gives us the form that uh, we are looking for. Something like this. We have these holes here and so on. I think maybe it's better to reduce this, the uh, thickness is a little too much. So for that I'm just going to select both of timber, both of fractures, and here I'm giving it 0.7. We give it a time. Okay, we can go to 0.5, no, okay, to point five. And you can come to the matrix and for this one change this value to 5 maybe and for this one also to 5. So the distance between each timber will be reduced something like this. So we have a finer uh, distribution of the timbers along the sides, the side. Good. But now in this direction we need more. So I'm give it uh, 60. Yes. And in this direction also we need to give it uh, this 100. Let me give it 120. Maybe 130. Great. So as you see here, we have a nice distribution of this, the whole structure. Yes, yeah, well, the bottom part, this area, we don't need to care about so much because at the end it will be covered by the concrete base uh, so it's not important how it looks like here. Important is this other part that are looking fantastic and great. Okay, now in this part we are done with the modeling of the structure and making the timbers. In the next part, because uh, I think this will maybe be a long, it, it was a long uh, tutorial, I have to make it in the second part. I'm going to give, I'm going to add actually this, this path long on, on the surface and show you how we do that uh, the best way possible. There are mo uh, several solutions for this, but I prefer to look for a simplest and um, less time consuming method to achieve this at the end. So join us in the next part. And uh, please like the tutorial if you found it useful and subscribe to our channel to get informed about upcoming tutorials. Uh, this will actually help us to grow and make better tutorials for you in the future. So thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorials.